jam 7 pas ya kita mulai ya we start at uh, around 4 minute from now Good evening, everyone. Thank you to joining with us. Uh, welcome back to our regular events, Franks. Uh, this is our 59. Uh, my name is Ray from a um, board of member of uh, program, PMI Indonesia chapter. Today, our Franks uh, topic is uh, using BI for project control. So during this session, uh, we will learn uh, from our speaker, Osama Saad. Uh, that we share about the future of the system automation 
in project control why do we need uh, them more than ever and the practical application of power bi in planning how we can use the power bi to prepare reports in the seconds and analyze a project with one click and why do we choose the power bi over other tools uh, what problems can we solve in project control with uh, power bi the consequence uh, of not using power bi or any automation tools and the practical of using the power bi by planning departments so <clears throat> i will introduce uh, our speaker tonight uh, is a very honor to great uh, to have a great our speaker osama hello osama how are you hello uh, how are you i'm very well thank you and it's a pleasure to um, meet you all here and i would like to thank the team at pmi indonesia chapter and uh, it's an honor to be here as well okay thank you i will introduce you uh, for about osama osama is a project con uh, project control consultant uh, who helps construction companies and planning department deliver outstanding results for the clients and project he has a planning department complete uh, progress report in seconds and analyze anything in their project with a one click of the button he helps planner build powerful project control system and automation to ensure uh, success of their project and impress the, their clients uh, he also assists the project control department in preparing uh, extension of time claims as per best practice okay uh, before we start <coughs> uh, uh, all participants will be mute and uh, video turn off. Uh, if you have a question, submit in chat box. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> submit in chat box and put Q before uh, your question so that we can look the question. Uh, this session will be recorded. Uh, presentation will be shared after to participant after the session. Uh, <clears throat> a certificate will be distributed to all participants uh, who join the session. And for the member of uh, PMI Indonesia chapter, there is a automation auto submission PDU here. Uh, also, this uh, session will be record. Yeah, the recording will be upload to you uh, YouTube channel. Now we are live in YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe also for PMI Indonesia chapter. Okay, happy learning and give us feedback. Okay, but before uh, we start, <coughs> uh, I will give information uh, about uh, PMI Indonesia, Indonesia chapter events, uh, CIMEX, yeah, uh, that already open registration, as we know. The CIMEX will be held on the on uh, 5 and 6 October in Bandung, yeah, West Java. Uh, so don't forget to uh, register for CIMEX. Okay. Uh, Osama, I think uh, mm. now the screen is yours. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who was who was working the hard behind the scenes to make this webinars for us. I would like to thank the team at PMI Indonesia chapter. In this webinar we will talk about Power BI in project control. It's still a new tool in the market. Not many people are familiar with it, and we will have a nice discussion and a demo about how we can use automation and improve our project control systems. A little bit about myself. Uh, in case you are joining me for the first time or someone who doesn't know me, I am a practitioner in project control since 2010. Skilled in planning, Power BI, delay analysis and claims. Bachelor in civil engineering. Studied MBA in the UK. I did all my research around construction projects. I worked in super large construction projects as well. Member of PMI and AACAI. I currently serve as a director of marketing at 
AACEI UAE chapter. It's a volunteer role. I specialize in project control services. I also coach companies on how to set up systems. I offer delay analysis and the claims services and the project control training. I am PMP, PSP, and BMISP certified. The content of our webinar, we will first talk about why automation is so important and why do we need it more than ever. Second, we will talk about interactive dashboards and project control, principles of data analytics, and the benefits of automation in project control. So why automation has become so important for us right now? And by the way, before I start, I came from construction background, and maybe some of you don't have this background. It really doesn't matter. Maybe some of you came from IT background. We still work with projects, projects that have scope, timeline, and we always want more innovative systems to manage our projects in a better way. So this is the whole purpose. I'm gonna talk, if, uh, explain everything in construction context, but you can relate everything I'm explaining to your own projects. So we have more complex projects than ever. In construction, we have Expo, we have iconic towers in every major city. We have high rise buildings. We even have whole cities along with the um, associated residential buildings and infrastructure to support urbanization. And as I mentioned, you can relate that to yourself as well if you are from IT background. So um, uh, you can have more complex IT projects as well. And uh, there is a demand in this area as well. Industries, all industries are innovating. Banks, IT, FinTech. Supporting operations should improve too. We should improve delivery, customer service, user interface and user experience, communications, QC and the QA risk management. Here is one example. In the banking industry right now, can you imagine if all requests are processed manually? Like on piece of paper, someone will prepare the request, hand it over to another colleague, it's gonna take forever. Banks are expanding, even internationally. They have bigger customer base, so you can see what I'm talking about here. So we can, if we want to reach more customers, we need to improve other areas as well. Delivery, customer service, communication, so other operations should upgrade too. But what about construction? I'm sure it's the case in IT as well, but in construction, we see innovations every day. We have the brick cost model in construction. We also have modular systems, so more innovations to make our life better and our projects more effective. Uh, an, uh, an example about modular system is um, pods, for example, if you know about it, it is like you are building a whole bathroom outside the project. You deliver it to the project and you just fix it. It works perfectly if you have super large constru construction project. I personally work it in a project that has pods, this type of innovation, because it, 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 it has three super high rise buildings. So it was efficient to do so. We also have very custom models. And as I said, if you are improving one area, in the industry, other operations should upgrade too. So what about project control? After everything I explained about the complexity and everything else, what about project control? Not too much. We are not, we are, we are not really doing our best here. Here are some challenges we have in project control. Traditional progress report preparation in, in, in any project you know, uh, with any nature. You're gonna look at the data, maybe come uh, copy some data, 
into Excel, do some formulas, and that's it. That's how you want to monitor the performance. Manual progress analysis. If you use a, a tool like Promavera, you're going to set up filters, you know, look at information, make sure everything is correct. Import XCR files to find the information you need in your schedule update. Validating calculations and dealing with Excel formulas errors. It happens all the time. So when you have a report, you always want to check the calculations. Make sure they are all set up properly and you don't have any Excel errors. Traditional formatting of reports. So finally, after you have the outcome, you need to do more formatting. Title, color formatting, etc. Workload and meeting deadlines, because of everything I explained, it takes a lot of time and the effort to manage your projects this way. Prepare progress presentations. You have to do it manually whenever you have to. When you want to present the progress status to your management, you have to actually prepare the presentation, extract the data you need, look at Promovera and other documents to extract the data. Some companies spend the money, a lot of money, on project control solutions to resolve the issues that I have just talked about. Hire more expensive qualified planners. It's a challenge in the market to companies. Let's shift gears to Power BI. So I preferred that I, I can have a demo, real life project about what's going on and how we can solve the issues that I talked about using a tool like Power BI. So this is more than just a software. It's a complete comprehensive project control model. Let's start with the dashboard. So before I start, here is an alert. Um, some of you maybe are beginners in project control. So you, you might not have an idea about SPI, earned value, et cetera. The purpose is not to teach you project control at this stage. It's about to show you where the future is going and what the challenges we have right now and how we can overcome them. This is the whole uh, purpose of my presentation is not to teach a project control. So that's my dashboard. We can start with contract information. Contract start, contract finish, forecasted finish as per schedule update, the delay according to the schedule update, variance percentage, SPI, planned versus actual as per both cost and demand hours, time elapsed versus time remaining percentage, remaining cost and earned value cost, progress curve, a summary progress curve, a variance analysis, planned versus actual, activity-wise, delay, project delay trend, and another representation of variance analysis, early planned percentage, late planned percentage, actual percentage, and the variance percentage, activity-wise. It is not hard to do something like that. You build a dashboard, you have all the information you need. But what I'm going to show you right now is this is the progress status for the project on a specific data date. With a click of a button, you get everything. You get the same status on the specific data date. And you can do that. If you have you know, 50 schedule updates, you can always check the progress status with a click of a button. So you do not have to import a schedule update or um, find or browse progress reports on your PC to find the information you need. I can also use any filter. So for example, I don't want the dashboard for the whole project. I want it for concrete only. So this is everything, you know, is super hyper interactive. The outcome is updated based on my selection. So that's land versus actual and everything else based on the concrete part only. 
I can use combination of filters, not only one filter. So that's it. So that's for concrete of this part of the project. I can remove any filters. So everything is seamless. It is, you know, in the same location, lay same layout. And what about one activity here? For example, a slab reinforced concrete. I have a negative variance that I want to investigate further. It, it caught my attention, so I will click on that activity and everything is hyper interactive. Same applies here as well. Maybe this activity with the 4%. So I can click here anywhere and everything is updated accordingly. With one click, I can navigate to a whole different reporting area. So I don't have, again, I don't have to, to open uh, a progress report that is 100 pages long and keep scrolling until I, see, I, I want, until I find the information I need. With one click, I navigate to what I want. That's a progress curve. And I have some actual here up to this area. And again, you might not be familiar about progress curve, but it is something that shows you the historic information of the progress status. So, uh, it, you know, at each point uh, on time, you can see the planned versus actual on weekly basis and the cumulative as well. Maybe I want to analyze this part of the chart so I can grab a slider and see the information. It's the same information, but zoomed in for better analysis. With one click, I can have the progress curve for concrete part. But what does it mean here? It means that if I have you know, the concrete is like a, a separate project. It has its own timeline, its own contract value. The percentages you see here is for concrete only. The question is, how long does it take you to do everything like that manually? Like, you know, like maybe filter uh, certain activities. If you are working in IT, you have uh, an IT project, you have maybe a software development, you have uh, some testing, you know, Etc. So if you want to measure the performance of one area, it takes some time to make everything manually. You can also add combination of filters if you want. That's a four column steel reinforcement. You can even do it for other areas. So you got the idea. So with one click, you can get whatever you want. It is a progress curve. It's the same, but it is for man hours. So I'm not going to explain it again. It's the same concept, but everything is based on man hours. And again, when I click on concrete, the indicators are updated accordingly to reflect my choice. One of my favorite tools in project control is a progress matrix. Activity wise, the planned percentage as per early and delayed distribution, actual percentage, and the variance. And um, I can, you know, the delayed areas are highlighted automatically. I did not have to do, to do that manually. I have the red icon here to reflect delays as well with the red color. Everything is automatically formatted. If it's ahead, it's going to show me the result in green. And with one click, I can see the project status on any data date of my choice. So that's on this data date, that's on this data date, and so on. So everything will change accordingly. Okay, 
it, it seems that it's a bit slow, but it is not really because I am, we are using Zoom, we are recording, so it takes a little bit of the RAM memory, but for normal user, it is not that slow. And I have here also some bars to show me the strength of the value. So 100% is a complete bar. 43% will show me 43% of the bar as a nice representation. It's all automatic. And um, again, if I click on concrete, for example, all concrete activities are filtered out for me. The indicators will be updated accordingly. So just to, to stop you here for a moment, what, I'm, what am I trying to do here? Uh, planning engineers um, do not really or can't deliver the expected value in their projects. And I'm sure we can all agree about that. We, we expect more of them. We want project control department to add more value to the project and help the projects move forward. The problem is, there is so much to do, so little time. What I'm explaining here as a concept is not new. Everyone can do it. The question is, how long will it take you to give me the results I want? And we want, in this case, we want to leverage technology, some sort of coding, because you have only 24 hours a day. If you have a larger project with five members in project control department, uh, that's maybe over than 100 hours a day, which is really not too much if you want to make full analysis and add the expected value. So that's why we want to use a, a technology like that. Here is another uh, visualization. I have the planned versus actual activity-wise. And mm, Again, I can change data date and everything in one second is updated for me. Maybe slab shuttering is something that interests me. So I'm going to click on a slab shuttering and everything is updated. And maybe I want to see additional information that will help me in my analysis. So if I hover over this activity, I can see what is the exact figure of planned cost, earned value cost cost variance and the remaining cost. That's only a demo. It can be customized. You can as, add as much as you want, any data you want, it is only an example. So the trick here is, you know, data analytics. That's, you know, the secret source of what we are trying to do here. Okay, again, I can use any filter. Everything will fil be filtered out for me. And um, this is really an interesting visualization. I call it activity DNA. We know the activity DNA for humans. It tells a lot about you, your health condition, family diseases, genetic issues. It tells a lot about yourself. For activities, we have something similar. So first, I want to set up a filter. Let's take ground floor, concrete, column is reinforcement. And here is what you can see. You can see everything about this activity. So on a weekly basis, that's how much of progress you have achieved over this week period only. 40% in this week, another 40% the week after, 5%, then 5%, then the remaining 10% in this week. I see also the cumulative trend. So in the second week, I achieved 40% in this week alone, but overall 80% until I achieved 100%. I, I compare it also with what I should have achieved as their baseline schedule. So that's the planned trend. And you can gain many insights here. You know, I get everything like in seconds, as I showed you, it's a real life example. If you are trying to get the same information in a traditional way, you're going to spend the whole afternoon doing so. Importing XCR files, 
looking at progress reports to find everything you need. But it is not the case with if you have a powerful data analytics processor. Some insights we can get, for example, the plan, the trend shows me that we, we should have completed the activity over three weeks period. But actually, it took us five weeks to complete the activity. It's a question mark. We can raise the issue. We also know when the activity has started and when it was finished. And we know also that the activity started and finished ahead of a schedule because this is where I started and finished the activity on the left-hand side of the planned line. So you can do that for any activity of your choice. Get the activity DNA with a click of a button. This is the earned value trend. So the bars here represent the earned value on a weekly basis. How much money I am making on a weekly basis, which is really valuable, of course. I also have the cumulative actual in yellow and how much I should have claimed for as per this line, which is in light green. But maybe I am not interested to see the earned value for the whole project. I want to see concrete as an example. So you get only the money, money, you know, analysis for concrete part only. You can also use combination of filters as much as you want. Again, everything with a click of a button. Cost variance trend. In each week, how much money I am falling behind, how much money I am losing. So that's the cost variance. We see the trend in front of us. Um, and trend the charts are very powerful because it can give you insights. For example, from this point onward, I had sharp decrease. I had really more delays than usual. So um, it is an opportunity for further investigation. Maybe I have major area in the project that I did not start for some reason. And when you investigate further, you will find about this issue. And that's how we project controllers add value to our projects, right? By doing this type of analysis. The problem is we are still limited with the resources we have, the traditional ways that holds us back. It is another trend. Uh, but for project delays, as you can see, we started the project, you know, with zero delays, which is the case in every project. We start, you know, as a happy family, everyone is happy, but soon enough, we have delays in the project. Again, from this point to onward, I had more delays. So it seems that something is wrong here because this delay is not only affecting the earned value, why is it's affecting the critical path of the project? That's how you can see more negative float or more project delays. So something is really wrong here because the delay is both uh, critical and uh, is associated with, or, uh, uh, you know, there is a lot of money assigned on these activities. Cost variance breakdown, I showed you the cost variance trend, how much money we are losing every week, but it is not enough. There's only half of the battle because it doesn't help me much if you tell me that we are $1 million behind the schedule. I want to see the breakdown. You know, I want to see where I am losing the bulk of my money. So that's the cost variance breakdown. And Power BI will segregate the causes of delay automatically from highest to lowest. 
and the size of each area is determined based on the relative strength of the value. So if the whole cost variance is 100%, they're gonna uh, allocate the size of each area, um, uh, you know, based on the relative weightage of the value. So I have here slab reinforced concrete, number one cause of cost variance followed by this activity, slab is still enforcement, etc. Again, with one click, you get, you know, with one click, I can go to any data date of my choice with one click in one second, I get the revised the cost of variance breakdown on this data date. These indicators will be updated accordingly too. And, uh, Maybe let's go at slab shutter. I want to see what's wrong here with the slab shutter. So I click on a slab shutter and I get everything updated. Or another way of analyzing activities is to hover over the activity and to see the exact figure of cost variance, plan to cost, earned value cost, plan to percentage, actual percentage, and this week period activity percentage complete. So you can gain some insights because in this week, I have a slab steel reinforcement as number one cause of cost variance. Two weeks after, it is not the case anymore. I have one activity, another activity, a different activity that is promoted to be number one cause. It has become now a slab reinforced concrete. Surprisingly, if you can see at the additional information that you see in front of you right now, when I hover over the activity, the work accomplished over the past week only is zero. So that's really interesting, right? Because right now, this activity, you know, it is not only the number one cause, but I'm not doing any progress there. So it makes sense that it has been promoted or the delay is significant enough to promote it to number one cause as a top cause. This is something you can know on your own if you work with Promavera with Excel, but uh, you know the output is really limited with the number of hours you have in your day with the energy level because you cannot perform very well you know the whole day. You are probably exhausting your energy during the day. So you are really limited. Humans are super limited. That's why we love computers. We work with them all the time in every area in our life. So you, we know that there was no progress over the past week only. You want to highlight that and you want to highlight that it has become or it has been promoted to the number one cause. This is only a demo. The possibilities are limitless. The sky is the limit. I provided one example about cost variance. You can use earned value, for example, budgeted cost, whatever you want. And you can do so with drag and drop. So because you have, of course, there is much work done in the background in the model, but you have everything there you know, for you. You can just choose to drag the total cost into this chart and everything will be updated accordingly. Earned value analysis. I showed you one chart about how much money we are making every week, right? But again, making $2 million doesn't really help me much in my analysis. I want to see the breakdown where this $1 million uh, can be found. So on a specific data date, these are my progress indicators. And I made $9.6 million. I can break it down further to see where the money is. Okay, so two main parts in the project. This is how much money in every area. I can even break it down further, floor-wise. So I see how much money is there floor-wise. Let's look at maybe ground floor. Okay. 
with this is the breakdown some money in the concrete in finishes map and also the bars are updated based on the relative strength of the value so 1.7 million dollars is a complete bar for finishes is not much amount so you can see um, a little um, bar highlights here we can also break the concrete down again how long will it take you to do that the traditional way i'm sure we can all guess the answer it is not so pleasant and uh, what about columns of shutter here or let's say take a slab reinforced concrete okay i know that i am making this much money okay but it doesn't tell me everything so i want to see if it's good or bad you know do i do well here or no so i can hover over this activity and see that the plan is 100 percent actual is 80 percent i am in delay so i know how much money i am making how much does it account from the overall earned value in the project. And also I, I can see if it is in delay or not. I can click on the activity and I can see the, uh, I can see the indicators updated for me. Okay, and you might have right now one thought, very important question right now. You, you can tell me, I, I, I appreciate what you are doing. It's very helpful. But the question is, how long does it take me to update everything inside Power BI? The answer is, it takes less than 30 seconds to have everything updated after you complete the schedule update inside Promovera. Can you imagine what's happening here, like the efficiency and the speed we are talking about? And uh, many of you finish the schedule update inside Promovera and spend one day or more doing the progress report. I am here to tell you that progress reports have already been done for you. It's uh, synchronized with the system. So after you finish the schedule update, the whole model, everything I showed you is updated. Progress curve, earnings value, all the new information is stored in the new updates, data dates. So everything is updated for you. And I don't know about you, but this is phenomenal, right? Especially if you are in the project control profession, you, you will really understand what I'm trying to do here. And uh, it is not rocket science, by the way. And you can do everything I have just done right now, not inside Power BI, but in it in a traditional way. If, if I ask you a question about a, break, a cost variance breakdown on a specific data date, you can import the XCR file, right? And you can assign a baseline, show the right columns, copy data, do you know, paste them in Excel, apply some Excel formulas, and you get the outcome. So everyone can do it. But... Uh, um, I have just explained one process. What I what I did is I just coded the process. I coded it, okay? So because it's all repetitive, it has the same steps. So I coded this process so that you will not have to reinvent the wheel and do everything from scratch all over again. Every, you know, in every report, someone is asking you to do, whether it is from management or it is for your, you know, regular, weekly progress reports, et cetera. And it is like you, you know, um, so you have everything and it, you are probably using several XCR files, right? And you are importing them one by one whenever you, you, you need to. Sometimes you are dealing with 10 Excel files to manage your projects. But here, the whole demo that I showed you, I did not use Promovera. I did not use Excel. It is one tool, Power BI. It is one. It is one layout. So you can see that I'm navigating in all report areas with one click. It's all one layout. 
Um, okay, so one layout, uh, one tool, uh, which is really convenient, right? Because it reduces the friction of, you know, having to get everything done before the, you know, the deadline. So let's recap of the benefits of Power BI. You can reduce the number of full-time planners, definitely, right? Because you don't have to have um, five full-time qualified expensive planners in your team. One good Power BI user can get everything done. The, this person can uh, update the schedule in Promovera and have everything updated on autopilot inside Power BI. You can complete progress reports in seconds. You can analyze any area in the project with a click of a button. Have all planning work in one layout, one location, and one tool, as I explained before. You don't have to worry about validating Excel formulas errors or calculations. Every single time you prepare a report, because it's uh, the process is coded, you don't have to make the Excel formulas manually every time. I coded one process. At the beginning of the project, you are building a machine. Okay? You are building the model. It is worth the investment, uh, your time investment. Um, okay, uh, but you reap the benefits every week for the rest of the project. You know, it's like a machine and it does the work for you. Create systems and complete tasks on autopilot with little intervention from your side. Create themes that save a lot of time on report formatting. I showed you many reporting areas. I apply some filters and the formatting is done for me. I don't have to create multiple Excel sheets <laughs> to paste the data and work on the formatting every time. You can impress your stakeholders and they build a powerful brand in front of clients. Provide massive value to the team toward the project success. You can have all answers in a progress meeting immediately on the spot. Just one scenario, one simple example. You can work for the consultant as a planning engineer. The contractor claimed that um, we don't have an issue uh, with activity A anymore because we increased the manpower and we achieved 20% of this activity over the past week alone. That's their claim. In, I have attended many progress meetings and I can tell you that in many cases, people will skip the issue because it's very hard to verify and validate everything immediately. You're gonna have maybe to you know, import the XCR files, it's check the contractors, the schedule update, do some filters, it takes some time. And uh, it is one hour long, uh, the meeting is one hour long, you can't really verify everything. With Power BI, you can sit in the meeting, you only need your laptop. You can, you can go to the activity DNA, as I showed you, and in seconds, you can tell the contractor, no, it is not correct. You achieved 0% over the past week, according to your schedule update. And instead of ignoring the issue and closing the issue, you request that everyone spends more time talking about the issue and addressing the solutions. And that's how planning engineers can add value to their projects. This is not possible, you know, in, 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 in many of the projects, it doesn't matter the, how big your project is. It doesn't matter how big your company is. The challenge is there. We know there is a challenge. We know planning engineers cannot deliver the expected value. We know about it, but we don't talk about it because we don't have any other option. The best part 
Power BI is free for the most part. It's a free software. It is by Microsoft. It's a Microsoft Power BI. However, Power BI is not meant for project control. It is meant to help companies manage a huge set of data, like McDonald's, Carrefour. It is not for project control. You will not find um, like friendly parameters that is designed to receive the data for SPI or earned value. It is not meant to do so. So you have to really do some work to make it power project control friendly. So you have to be familiar with data normalization, cardinality, data models, cross filter direction, snowflake schemas, primary and the foreign keys, because Power BI is a data analytics tool, is not a project control tool. So if you don't have any knowledge about the data analytics parameters, I recommend that you educate yourself about data analytics first, then use uh, Power BI. And uh, let's take some of the questions from the audience. Yes, thank you, Osama. Uh... Good presentation. Uh, I think we have already saw several questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, from uh, Mifta Farid, what is the challenge to create uh, this dashboard and maintain the consistency of the data throughout the project? Mm, you, you, you like how it is done, or yes, uh, you already done. Uh, for yeah. the question, so, yes. what is the question again about the maintaining and the developing the dashboard? Yes, Mr. Uh, uh, you can uh, unmute your uh, audio uh, mic, I think, for explanation. Hello, uh, Mr. I think for the question, the challenge to create the spot and maintaining the consistency of the data throughout the project. Okay. Uh, the consistency of data. Yeah, but because you know there is a process on how to approach that. So first, you build a machine, okay? Because um, everything, if if you are a planning engineer or you, you are in the project control field, there is a process on everything. You know, to calculate earned value, to prepare a progress report, to prepare a progress curve. Right? There is a process. You know, uh, about developing and updating it. So at the beginning, we code this process. It is not really hard. It's, um, you know, uh, I, I also struggled, by the way, at the beginning because uh, I didn't know anything about uh, Power BI. And there is limited assistance um, out there in the project control field. So you, you build a machine that is user friendly and uh, find a way to code the process you are going through and then everything will be automatically updated on autopilot okay hmm. okay we have a, a, a other question from adi kusuma <clears throat> This amazing software is uh, very attractive and powerful for presentation, but how we know uh, or trace any error ah, good. In, the, in the source database? It's a very good question, yeah. actually. Very good question, because it's, it's a pain yeah. point, actually, because if you can realize, I love this question, because if you can realize, I did not see the data in front of me. Like, everything is in the background. I only see the output. So it's a bit tricky, especially for beginners, because you can see the results, but you really don't know if it's correct or not, or there is an error. So I would say that it, it's going to happen over time uh, because, uh, you know, like in Promovera, people expect to be an expert in Promovera from day one. You have to put in the work, make mistakes, go through the process. So what I recommend is start now, start using Power BI now, start educating yourself and over time you will become more confident so after some time when you are well established i have um validation points inside power bi it just comes you know naturally uh, with experience 
uh, because I faced many fatal mistakes before. So I knew how to correct and validate them. You can create a validation point so you can see if something is odd or wrong. It's the same case with Promovera. After using it for several years, you can feel if something is wrong, right? Because you have used it. So it is the same concept in Power BI. Okay. We continue. Uh, thank you, uh, Osama. We continue the from other to other question <clears throat> from Aisha. How to make the dashboard? Does uh, this link to Excel? Uh, and how to maintain the data? Okay, good question as well. So there are okay. First, there is no native integration between Power BI and the Promovera. Why? Because as I said, it is not meant for project control. So in this case, we have two possible options. A third party application like Excel, because Excel, because there is a native integration between Excel and Power BI and Excel and Promovera. So it is like an intermediate. The second option is, uh, it's a bit advanced. Um, it is called ODBC, Open Database Connectivity. So these are the two options. And um, yeah, maintaining the system is a bit tricky. Yeah, I know, but it, you can also work around that, um, uh, you know, because I cannot explain the specifics because most of you uh, are not familiar with Power BI. So if I say something technical, you will not mm -hmm. probably get the idea. Um, so um, regardless the connection method you are using, you can always, build your model in a way that will be user friendly uh, for maintaining the data. Mm. Okay, thank you. Bu Aisha, if you have uh, something not clear, you can uh, unmute the mic. Okay. Uh, mm. We continue for uh, other question from Pa Hotma Pasaribu. Uh, thank you for sharing, Mr. Osama Saad. I have some question. Uh, first, would you like to emphasize uh, why you choose Power BI as your tool project control? Let's say compare uh, to the Primavera or Pro Microsoft yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah. And the second is, uh, does dashboard use uh, for one project only or can be used for multiple projects uh, mm. at the same time as well? Okay. So for the first the part of the question, uh, Power BI does not replace Promovera, of course. Promovera is a scheduling software. It is not project control tool. I know it, it doesn't, you know, it's unlike the popular opinion about Promovera is, is one stop shop for all project control solutions. No, Promovera is not project control solution. It's a scheduling uh, solution. That's why Promovera is so limited in our ability to plan and control projects. Do you want a proof? Try to do everything I, I showed you inside Promovera. It's impossible. However, we need Promovera to determine the critical path, calculate the total float, um, you know, have the schedule update. So it is a scheduling software. Power BI is not a software. So when you update the schedule inside Promovera and have all dates, critical path, negative float, now the Promovera job is over, but it's still mandatory. You get the data and you want a powerful data analytics processor, which Power BI will do for you. And uh, the second question, um, I forgot does, about it. Does the dashboard use uh, uh, use for one project only or can oh, yes. use uh, oh, multiple okay. projects? Okay. So you can do for more projects, but I do not recommend that. Especially if you are a beginner, because it is. I tried that, it is so easy to make mistakes you have multiple projects in one file. I recommend that you have a separate Power BI file for each project for, you know, to get the best out of, because I'm a big fan of, of accuracy. I will put accuracy and reliability as a top priority. 
if you have a fancy dashboard or Power BI model that will give you inaccurate information, I don't really want it. It's useless for me. So I want to make, I want to have a solid, reliable, and accurate model. That's my top priority. Mm. Okay. The third question is uh, that A is in terms of data. Let's say when you got uh, the cost variance strand, where the dashboard uh, data derived from? Mm. Like the connection, like where it is coming from. Mm -hmm. Mm. So yes. again, I, I explained that there are two possible connections. Uh, it's really up to you which one you use, mm. Excel or ODBC. Um, okay, and um, uh, you know it, it's really up to you because it is not universal, right? It is not default. So I don't expect everyone to use my own method and my own formatting and you know everyone is different it's based on the requirements of your project some require some projects will demand less data some projects will demand more data but uh, we want uh, you know to of course find a way to synchronize um, the data connection source okay between power bi and the promovera because if you have to add multiple steps in the process you increase the friction and the power by is used this. So you can, you know, continue using Excel, right? So try to have, uh, to reduce the friction. And I explained one parameter under the data analytics uh, slide, data normalization. It's a huge topic. You can search about it. It explains what I'm uh, talking about right now. Okay. Uh... Still from uh, Hotma, do you connect from multiple data source with different format? Uh, no, I prefer to have uh, one data mm -hmm. connection source. I tried before to use, um, you know, multiple connections. I'm not a big fan of it because again, it will increase the friction. Mm -hmm. Because I like to have just, um, you know, I wanna have everything in two locations: Power BI and the data connection source. That's it. So if anything is wrong, I'm gonna check any of these. But imagine if I have more data connection sources, like 10, right? So it's not really convenient, right? Because I can see something wrong. I have to go back and check which source is having the wrong issue. Second, what is the issue? Again, I am trying as much as possible to eliminate friction and additional steps. After I finish the schedule update, it's only one step. That's what I'm, what I, you know, of course it did not come to me from day one. It's after trial and error, you know, making fatal mistakes. I had, I had sleepless nights to find out what has gone wrong. So it's a part of the process, right? It happens to everyone and you will probably go through that, uh, but try to have one step. One step is perfect, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, next question from Adam Topic. If uh, various variation order, how to keep historical data? Mm. If amendment contract, how to cut off? Yeah, I actually, I did not expect many construction practitioners, but this question is from a construction practitioner. Mm. So it's very related to my specialization. Uh, of course, you can adjust that later on. And uh, sometimes we have new variation orders. We have extension of time claims the, because I show you everything based on the baseline. But at some point in the project, we have a revised schedule, revised the planning requirements and revised the completion date. You can also, it's the same concept. You have to revise your machine, that's it. So I talked about building a machine. Now you will revise uh, the machine to accommodate the new changes. And that's it, same concept. Okay, uh, thank you. Another question. Is it uh, something similar like uh, Google Data Studio? I don't know about Google Data Studio. That's why I cannot okay. answer the question. Okay, from uh, Densha. Uh, 
acting for uh, Arif ya Arif Indrian Shah Riyadi. According to your experience, what kind of data source that uh, mostly used for data analytic uh, hmm. in project management that more easy to manage and also to load in Power BI? Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, you know, the, the concept is really simple because maybe some people are overthinking that. It doesn't have to be the case. Maybe the result is impressive for you because maybe it's the first time you see something like that we are not used to it but the concept is really simple you have a project schedule list of activities each activity has attributes activity id activity description total cost start to finish total flow attributes these attributes for the same list of activities will it change every week a revised new total float amount, earned value, actual start. So these attributes will really change. And instead of going back and forth to the corresponding document, uh, you want a data analytics processor. Um, there are many actually software providers. If you can search data analytics solutions, you can find a lot of them. Many companies develop solutions to analyze data. In my humble opinion, Power BI is the best tool in the market, hands down, because it's Microsoft. Microsoft is big enough to make something amazing, right? The second um, reason is Power BI is a free service for the most part. What else uh, do you want, you know, for that? So it is really about... Um, collecting the data, all the data I talked about, attributes, list of activities, and uh, uh, dump everything in the data connection source, you know, in, in the machine, you know, dump everything in the machine and let Power BI do the magic and process the data. And that's it, as simple as that. Okay. Thank you. Uh... Continue with the uh, other question from Rahmat Hidayat. <coughs> PC Project Control has one <coughs> of the tasks, uh, tasks uh, namely to provide feasibility of the health of the project uh, from the existing data. With tools uh, like uh, Power BI, it will be very easy. How is different from? How is it different from data analysis? Yeah, it is not different because Power BI is a data analytics tool. You know, what we want is yeah. what we have been doing the traditional way is to use Excel for the most yeah. part. And we use Excel, it is not because it's amazing, it's because we do not have any other option. We are trying to do data analytics inside Excel. But guess what? Excel is not a data analytics tool. It's good to manage data, you know, but not data analytics tool. It is in some regard. It is. It is. If you are advanced Excel user, you can use Power Pivot and the Pivot Table. If you are really good enough in that, you can get some decent results. But for the most part, no. Another proof: if Excel is enough, why would Microsoft develop Power BI? I hope it makes sense. And um, mm, yeah. so, really, um, you need data analysis. And if you think about it. Um, if you have projects worth billions of dollars, does it make sense to use Excel to control projects with the size? It's really hard. It's <laughs> You can't really do that because Excel is also limited in uh, in some cases. So I hope it, un you know, it answers that question. Yeah. Okay, uh, continue with the uh, other question. From Mahfuz Amri, can we have standalone file with Power BI connected to static data from Excel or Microsoft Access? Yes, of course. You know, you can do that. You can search possible connections with Power BI. There is a lot of you know possible connections, including the Excel Microsoft Access as well. Okay. Okay, this is a uh, from the Dian Shah Maiman. 
how can we manage uh, Power BI to execute formula to process our data and show it uh, show it to the dashboard. Yeah. Meanwhile, I I have project that uh, use Excel file as data source. Uh, kindly please uh, enlighten me about. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what I um I you know. Uh, because I assume from the question that the person has some knowledge of Power BI. So when we do the formulas inside Power BI, it's called, you know, because Power BI is really different from Excel. In Excel, you can um, work with cell wise. Cell, you can just sum two cells. Power BI is not like that. It's um, data model, works with data models. Power BI sees only rows and columns, they don't see cells. Okay, so uh, in Power BI, you have to do some sort of coding. It's a called DAX uh, formula. DAX mm -hmm. is short for data analytics expression. So it is DAX formula. You have to learn some coding. Um, uh, you can add calculated columns and uh, measures, quick measures. And um, yeah, that's how you can actually do the maybe SPI calculation variance. Some people try to do that in Excel before they connect to Power BI. So that's how they read the data. But again, it is not uh, a good practice because um, it, you know, it, it, it violates the data analytics principles, data normalization, which I talked about. Again, you are adding more steps, right? So you have the data inside Excel. Another step is to calculate formulas inside Excel, then connect Power BI. Again, it's you are adding friction in the process. So I hope this answers the question as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is uh, quite a interesting question from Adi Kusuma. Uh, maybe you have a trick how to connect a online database in company cloud to the Power BI. When several person updating in the same time, yes, uh, automatic, automatically Power BI will be updated also. Uh, even we are in different area or country. Uh, last time uh, I tried to connect data from Google Drive, but it doesn't work. We saw uh, type uh, we can choose when uh, we upload or connect uh, online database to Power BI. Yeah. I think so, so, um... yeah. Sometimes it is not what you do, but how you do it. Uh, everything is possible. Uh, but um, some people, they are not just familiar or they don't know about the possible solutions out there. Uh, we as, you know, project control professionals, maybe engineers, you know, we, we think we know everything, but we don't. You know, we only have some knowledge in Promovera, Excel, maybe Power BI, but there is so much out there that we don't know anything about. I recommend based on your case, because I don't know much details about what you are trying to do, like what type of cloud, uh, et cetera. Uh, of course, Google Drive is not really a good idea, uh, but uh, you can check the possible connections. You are probably you probably want to connect database and the many database providers have cloud based solutions as well. It's almost every, every uh, because that's the concept of database, right? Because database is if you work in, a retail, for example, they have many stores and the branches and uh, the inputs are fed in by all the stores inside the model. So that's the concept of database, of course. So you can check uh, other database connections, Azure or uh, database connection. And uh, maybe in many, in, I think it will be the case for you that you, you, your company doesn't uh, probably um uh, have this type of database solution so maybe they will have to invest in some database uh, tool um you know to have the data stored all data from all projects stored in one place then you have the connection with power bi mm -hmm. uh i think uh Fadi, if you have, want to explain more uh please uh, unmute your mic uh... Yes, he just said that uh, I mean we have data in SharePoint and allows uh, and allows some person in the same organization to update. That's mean of. Yeah, hello, hello, Pak. Mr. Osama said, 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, in our organization or company, sometimes we have share point that mm. several person can update. Like uh, maybe we have report in Excel. I can update, you can update, then our team also can update together in the same time. Then this is auto, auto save. Yeah. Means when we generate Power BI, then uh, several person also update the database will be automatically connect. This is correct, right? Mm -hmm. then, yes. And how we we make connection between the database to the Power BI. Yes. Okay. So uh, there are two solutions, maybe. And uh, one solution is uh, ODBC, Open Database Connectivity, and you can use you can connect the data to Promovera itself because uh, Promovera has the option of having all users synchronized on the same system, and you can extract data from database connectivity, open database connectivity, if you do the right setup. Or you can use a, a database. Uh, there are many databases, actually, uh, you can use. Uh, and uh, um, uh, you, if you can go to Power BI, if you have it installed, and you probably have it installed, you can check the connections. And under database category, you can have a lot of databases. You can just choose any tool you want that supports the cloud uh, interaction and have uh, everything updated. Uh, but um, yeah, so it's really up to you if you, you know, uh, Promovera is a good solution, but it has some disadvantages as well. Unfortunately, database providers have disadvantages as well because you, you wanna, you know, it's not only about um, having all the team work on the same database, but also, uh, you want to track errors because someone can make an honest mistake. They can destroy the whole model. It's really uh, tough to manage, to be honest. You know, it really takes some thoughts and work. It is not as easy as it sounds. And I am, I'm not worried about having the connection. I am worried about the consequences and the disadvantages of having um, a synchronized the platform. Because I tried it. I, I, I want it to be cool, you know, but it has disadvantages. Okay, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think this is end of the question. Uh, thank you, uh, Sama, for uh, your explanation. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have. Uh, I this... have a question, boy. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. 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 Uh, Ahmad, please. Mr. Osama. Hello. Uh, hello. Is a uh, if someone want to learn. Um, maybe hands-on training, how many days it takes for the uh, mastering of a Power BI. And yeah. uh, can you, you might have the number of uh, how much cost if uh, someone use the control without the Power BI and uh, with the Power and someone make a control process with the Power BI. So how much the reducing cost? with these tools. Uh, the other one is uh, in the construction, uh, I know the BIM, the IM, IM mm. application uh, for control. So what's the difference is with the BIM? Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, for BIM, BIM is, you know, it has uh, like, uh, you know, you can connect multiple uh, elements uh, inside the model. So it's not only the schedule, you can connect with the drawings with other elements as well. Uh, Power BI is not that comprehensive solution. And to be honest, I, I know my answer is surprising, but I prefer Power BI over BIM. I know it, BIM looks fantastic. <laughs> But it is not about what BIM offers. It's about what work you have to do. And in many cases, I work in super large construction projects. What I found is uh, BIM is amazing, but uh, it takes a lot of work to take advantage of it. And many people are just busy. They don't put in the work. They don't have a structured the process. So they get really limited benefits from BIM. Power BI is to the point. You know, as I showed you, you get what you want, add value, and the move on. So that's uh, uh, my opinion. Mm. 
Oke okay, Pak Ahmad. About, thank you. about the, efis, the efficiency uh, using the control without a power PI and with the power PI. So it seems uh, reducing the cost of control in terms of uh, how much yeah, money you, you know, for comp I work with companies and when I talk about power because I work with them closely to you know employ the power PI in their team. So there is a process, but uh, the savings are huge actually because of the first thing companies will save is a lot of serious money uh, on hiring expensive qualified planners and it might seem evil like oh you are supporting companies to save money and not hire planning engineers but we have seen it technology replaces humans and uh, some people you know can complain about it others can do something about it so uh, you know, in many in larger projects, if they have five full-time expensive senior planners, they can be replaced with only one because that's all what you need. Because typically, uh, the demo I showed you, by the way, only the demo, and I'm not exaggerating. If you try to do everything the traditional way, like importing XR files, preparing the Excel sheets, it's going to take a week. The 20 minutes demo can be done in a week working full time. I'm not exaggerating. Watch the recording, try to do it on your own, the way you do it. It takes a week. So can you imagine that um, one week of full-time planners? So it really saves a lot, especially on manpower or stuff. And uh, uh, there are some hidden benefits. Money benefits is uh, when you impress your uh, stakeholder and you work with clients, we will be attracted to work with you more and more because now right now you can be perceived as someone professional who can provide outstanding project control services and maybe um, big clients want to work with contractors like that because uh, there is a high chance that uh, their projects will succeed using a tool like that okay thank you sam Oh, okay. Thank you. I think we have a uh, other question <laughs> from uh, Willy Regan. Uh, can you advise how big uh, is the project scale that is uh, suitable for your current model Power BI? Example, around 20,000 or 100,000 man hour per month. Or... Mm -hmm. So uh, they are talking about the savings or the size of uh, the project itself? Uh, like, I think how, it's around it's about the scale of the project. If uh, if I'm not if I'm not wrong, yeah. Okay, uh, I will really, explain. I will really? explain both. If, if it's I'm not wrong, clear, I will explain. Yeah, the size of the project. Yeah. No, okay, the size of the project. So, um, uh, I have multiple Power BI models. The one I showed you is a bit simple, but I have also other model which was very efficient. I worked in a project before. It has uh, more than 30,000 activities. It's a lot for many people to manage. And um, it was um, three super high-rise buildings. Each high-rise was 60 floors each. So it's a massive project. And it was really effective in this regard. And um, about maybe the man hour savings. Uh, I will just give you one example because it, it, it's really different in each project. But to give you one example, sometimes I had the report done for me with a click of a button. Typically, what happens in real life is you are a planning manager. You will delegate this task to the maybe planning engineers working with in your team. The planning engineer will spend the whole afternoon getting the report done based on the filter you want, specific data date. So they import the XCR file, copy the data, you know, do the Excel, you know, the process and come back in the afternoon because this is how long it takes to get the report done. And right now you don't have to, you will delegate the task to a software that uses coding and technology to get the work done. So you saved hours you know of course there are other benefits like you know maybe company will pay benefits to full-time stuff but you don't pay benefits to power bi power bi doesn't go on annual vacation 
uh, or you know annual leave so uh, power of ai doesn't get sick on the report submission day it happens it happens to sometimes so the number of hours to be saved is huge it's like tremendous really okay thank you uh, i think there's another question uh, i think this is end of the question uh, we have a photo session <laughs> for the end of session okay uh, everyone uh, please turn off your camera uh, mas Reza bisa bantu ya untuk hmm. capture Silakan teman-teman dibuka videonya. Uh, uh, saya coba ini karena banyak pesertanya mungkin saya akan uh, beberapa kali. Silakan saja sebentar. <tuh> How many bits again? Okay, better. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Osama. Uh, personally, thank you for your sharing today. Very interesting. I think it's very useful for us. Uh, see you for another sharing session. Thank yeah, you. Sure. Definitely, thank you all. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Osama. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, you PMI, you. Indonesia. Thank bye you, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.